challenge we faced essentially was to vaccinate the whole of Birmingham and Solihull population in a very, very short time frame. It was the whole health system that was involved in terms of the CCG as well as the, the acute trust and social services. There's been a lot of work with the Birmingham Community Health Trust who supported significantly with the schools. Also the housebound vaccination programme and the care home vaccination programme. So again, they had the, the knowledge, the skills and the competence, but they, they didn't have the people to deliver at that scale. So as a system, we could provide the people as long as for they provided the framework and the leadership within which we wanted to deliver. The, the biggest challenge we faced was how do we ensure the hard to reach communities get access to the vaccine. It's well enough to set up vaccination centres. So we had a position where we had five hospital hubs and f four mass vaccination centres. But how do we actually get out to those who aren't going to come to those centres? So we we're fortunate in that we had mobile vaccination vans available to us from the CCG. So we were very fortunate to have some of our religious leaders help significantly, but also Primark is another prime example where the business leaders also stepped up and gave us, the, gave us their space. So it's taking the health thinking outside of the convention and saying we need to go to where the people are. Whereas conventional health care is, you come to us when it's convenient for us. So we had to flip that on its head to say, well, we will go to you when it's convenient to you. We've reached a position where roughly 80% of the population in Birmingham and Solihull is, vac is vaccinated. But the key thing which we have done, which we're very proud of, is building the trust and getting out to those hard to reach communities and the, and the BAME communities. In relation to the future, I think we've, we've learned what system working can achieve. If we can move, remove those artificial silos that we've built up over the years because of commissioning and other factors and, and worked in this manner of seeing, well, where does the competency and leadership lie? And, and get that cell to lead across the, the health system that we have. We've proven that we can achieve a lot in a very short space of time. The situation challenge was ensuring that people that were in distress could get access to mental health services and mental health support throughout the day, evening and overnight, despite COVID, meaning that a lot of places had to physically close doors. What's been achieved through us all being able to work together is that actually we've, we've all recognised each other's skills and experience and expertise as different organisations and all worked as a, as a jigsaw to make sure that we could really do that one-stop shop, that be able to really say to someone, you've come to the right place, we can help you. Whether they'd got very, sort of, you know, struggling with low mood, all the way through to someone who's feeling suicidal or who's under the mental health trust and is having a difficult time, it didn't matter. Historically, mental health services have always struggled to, to engage with certain communities within Birmingham. But when we look at our data, we, we are getting callers from all wards within Birmingham. But I think the, the way in which it was set up in terms of that we had a number of our community development workers that moved across to, to help, help set up the helpline meant that we were able to, to have some really good routes into communities to say it's okay to bring this helpline. I think the benefits to the citizens of, of Birmingham and, and Solihull is they have got that one number. It's well publicised that they can, they can ring us. We tend to find that we get about 450 to 500 people that will ring us each week and our offer widens as every month goes past. But I think one of the, the other benefits is that using the information and the data that we get means that we've been able to then say back to the CCG, this is a need that we're seeing coming through, how can we meet that need? So again, for that sort of first time, we're able to be able to be really clear about making sure that the services that are on offer are actually really meeting people's needs. At the time, which was July last year, there was huge pressures, there was huge pressures on general practice and systems as a whole. 
um, our demand had increased by 30%. So we realised as a locality, and because we work in a deprived area and the needs, we've got high complex needs, so we realised had to come up with a solution or some kind of um, where we could see our patients where we'd run out of appointments. And that's when we had the surge site set up. So these are face-to-face -face appointments in the evenings and in the weekends. We have, what, 140 patients a day and we're open to 8 o'clock. We have NHS diversions as well. So it's across the six PCMs. We've had different um, admin staff and also a clinical staff, but also community teams and secondary care teams as well. And also voluntary care sector has been involved. Then after a while, because how we were working together, we set up our relationships and start working collaboratively with Heartlands A&E. And we realised that a lot of the patients were different various reasons go to A&E when it should be really a primary care problem. So we've had our doctors working in A&E and we've actually developed very good relationships and been learning from both sides. So we've now set up urgent care pathways. So there's benefits across the system really. So there's definitely benefits from patients and we've had about 100 patient responses come back giving very positive feedback. So the real benefit is that it's helped especially the practices, especially the smaller practices to ease pressure on the day. So we've been able to see the patients that they would have been struggled to see and also A&E, the acute emergency services as well. Primary care has a lot to offer and a lot to offer to help dealing with the health inequalities. So I think we can look at the surge site almost as a hub to talk about intermediate to care for our patients, urgent access, but also to think about neighbourhood integration using the hub site as a pivotal point. So there's a lot, lot that we can offer as a locality and the surge site. Ambitions for the future is to work together as a locality, so that's primary care along with secondary care and community care as well, to actually improve our patient outcomes, to take a whole population health and see how we can improve our patient services. The main aim is around equity and around safe care for everybody. One of our challenges is um, the diversity across the whole of um, Birmingham Solihull. We've also got a, a very young population for, across, I think it's one of the youngest populations in England at the moment, and we've also got a very high infant mortality rate. So our aim is to make sure that we reduce the infant mortality rate as, as much as we possibly can. We've also got Saving Babies Lives that aims to do that as well, um, bring down stillbirths by 2025. Involvement in the partnership has been from the service providers and we've had community matrons from each site involved, the Maternity Voices Partnerships and we as um, the LMNS local maternity and neonatal systems have very, been very much involved in moving the services forward. The national ask of um, NHS England was to do a, a population analysis and that was to get to know our population across Birmingham Solihull. We divided it into six different geographical areas and we found out lots of different vulnerabilities in each area. So we've created a dashboard, we've looked at previous pregnancies for the last two years and we're looking at current pregnancies and that's refreshed every month. And we look at all the different comorbidities and we're actually able to bring it down to postcode level, GP level, where we can actually target where we can put our services. And what we've actually discovered is that women who don't speak the language, women who have not got access to um, the resources that perhaps other people have, have got issues around accessing care. So we've got a team of eight link support workers who speak the top six languages in Birmingham and Solihull. And they are infiltrating into um, hospitals, homes, antenatal clinics and working as advocates with um, the women that we serve. The patients are feeling more at ease because they've got somebody who actually speaks their language. It's given more uh, confidence in the maternity staff as well. So we're looking at really extending and creating the dashboard a lot bigger so that we've got a bigger outlook. And we're not just looking at um, what's happening now, but also looking at um, healthcare and public health prevention in the future. In 2017, the, the Care Quality Commission did a review of Birmingham and the health and social care provision we were providing for the older citizens of Birmingham. What they found, there was a large amount of people being looked after in the wrong place uh, by the wrong people at the wrong time. They also found that communication was not great uh, between the health and social care sector as well. So what we looked at was over sort of 500 staff 
coming together, uh, working in five locality teams across Birmingham, and they were health and social care colleagues in one team. So the Early Intervention Programme is a wide programme where we focused on early supported discharge, so getting people back into their own homes earlier than we did in the past, but also the unnecessary admissions into hospital that actually we can keep those people at home as well, but do that holistic wraparound uh, from a health and social care perspective patient engagement has been very, very important in this because what people told us is that it's really difficult for them to navigate the health and care sector. So we have actually reduced um, the admissions into the acute setting so we're able to sort of keep people safe and provide the care in their own homes, do that really wraparound support for them. And we've also reduced the amount of time people spend in hospital as well so we've reduced the amount of bed days um, that there, but also actually getting people out into their own homes a lot earlier. We've also been able to reduce the amount of care that people have required because actually we've been able to get them to their optimum level of independence because actually keeping people independent is one of the main aims so they're not relying on you know, health and social care long term but how do we get people to take ownership of their own health is obviously really important and we've also actually helped system partners so when the pressures are there on the system as integrated teams we've been able to sort of help stopping the pressure in our acute hospital but also with West Midlands Ambulance Service. When we ran a search of patients just in my primary care network alone, and there are five in Solihull, I found that we had 12,000 patients who've had a high blood pressure recording in the last three years, and we knew we needed to tackle this. We also know that high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease disproportionately affects those patients with health inequalities, such as those with ethnic minorities or those from more deprived households. So involved in this partnership are the primary care networks in Solihull, made up of the practices, um, public health, gateway services which is commissioned by the council and we spoke to our whole Solihull Together board about setting up integrated hubs around communities and we have three of these now. One is centred around Kingshurst Library in the north, one in Richmond Road Surgery and the Monks Path Community Hub. So we identify the patient, they have, an, they have an intervention by gateway who then you know, find out who would need further intervention. The patient actually then continues to have that intervention through gateway or comes back to the surgery and we deal with the rest of their healthcare issues. What we've done in um, my particular hub is we've already had 30, 39 patients come through in the last three weeks. We found 50% of those patients to have a high blood pressure reading and two of them to have a very high blood pressure reading who needed on-call doctor input that very day. But the 50% of patients that we've already identified are now on our pathway with our clinical pharmacy team, our GP team as necessary. Um, and they've also already had the lifestyle interventions, so they can already start doing things at home. We are very ambitious for the future in this partnership. We want to develop these three integrated hubs um, into really true multidisciplinary, multi-agency working. So we would love to see other services join us and as work up in a more joined up way. The challenge that we had that needed addressing was an enormous backlog of patients waiting for care of various types caused by the, the COVID pandemic. So the whole system has been involved, so all of the providers, but also primary care and our local authority colleagues. So it, it has truly been, for the past 15 months or so, a, a genuine system response. And what we've had to do is change the way that we deliver care. And particularly through the acute phase of COVID, we set up a green site at Solihull. Solihull Hospital has a small number of theatres and we added more modular theatres to that and then completely reconfigured our services so that we could deliver high volumes of mainly cancer care we have had elective orthopaedics from UHB being delivered by our teams at ROH. We've transferred something like 600 patients from our waiting list for ENT and paediatric ENT across to the Children's Hospital. And we've worked very closely with our colleagues out in the Community Trust and in the system to discharge people more effectively and to try and make that whole pathway a, a, a smoother transition for patients. I think we've learned to work in a different way, in a better way, and we've learned that we can do things differently, which is really important. We've collaborated instead of competing, which means that we haven't wasted energy, and we've delivered so far a 17,000 patient reduction in terms of our two-year wait position, such that we will bring it in almost at zero by the end of this month.
with the advent of the integrated care system and the ICB, it gives us an opportunity to cement a lot of the relationships that we've built over the past two years from being relationships of necessity to actually now recognising that when we work in that way we can do more. And what we now are able to do by working together is say, well, actually there's a Birmingham and Solihull system way of doing that and by developing those pathways we make them more efficient for all patients. So as well as addressing efficiency of care, we start to address some of the inequalities of care in terms of access and delivery that have plagued the BSOL system for many years.